to the fans, thank you for coming along on this extraordinary journey. Thank you to all the people I don't know, allowing us to keep playing these games and keep telling these stories. Thank you so much for trusting me with this character that you've known for over 20 years. I really loved playing Tormund. You want to fight! This has been a life-changing experience uh, being on this. I never expected people to like Brienne of Tarth. I was totally prepared for people not to. The fans have, like, given me an identity that I didn't have. There are far more fans of the show that we, than we ever thought was possible. It would be nothing if it weren't for all the rumours and theories and intense discussion going on and the Game of Thrones viewing parties. Keeping it alive and when we take, like, a year and a half break. But everything has an end, even Game of Thrones. Hi everyone, it's Charlie. So we have the Game of Thrones Season 8 bonus episode that's coming this Sunday, which I'll of course do a video for, but we also have the Game of Thrones prequel that they just started filming, so I'll explain what the prequel series is about and the other prequels that George R. R. Martin revealed that they're developing right now. If you're brand new to the channel, be sure to subscribe to get all the Game of Thrones in a Song of Ice and Fire videos. There's a new round of that HBO Now giveaway too. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a comment on the video. First big thing, the bonus episode is just airing like a normal Game of Thrones episode next week. It's gonna be like a big wraparound. There'll be a lot of documentary stuff going on. There's a lot of extra stuff that they shot for the Blu-ray, which they're releasing later this summer. And I don't know about a really big box set, but I'm sure that they've produced a couple extra bonus materials for that. Whatever deleted scenes and anything they release later this year, of course I'll do videos for that stuff. But it's going to be a couple months before the Blu-ray comes out. So I'll just remind people about that when they start dropping featurettes and stuff. The big thing about the prequel that's going on right now is that George R. R. Martin just a little while ago was talking about three actually being in development, active development, because there used to be five, one of them HBO threw in the garbage, and four continued on. One of them they're filming right now. That's the Age of Heroes Long Night prequel series. The working title for that while they're filming right now is just called Blood Moon, which invokes a lot of imagery. I'll talk about the meaning of Blood Moon in the context that they're using it for the series in a second. But because George R. R. Martin said that there are two others that they're developing right now, even though they're not shooting those other two yet, I'm guessing on the list of possibilities, because there's a number of different series they could do, it's either Dance of the Dragons, The Blackfire Rebellion, or The Rise of the Valyrian Freehold in the Dragon Lords. The reason why they're probably going with a Long Night Age of Heroes prequel first is because it's similar to Game of Thrones, so it's familiar, but it'll be different enough that it won't feel like the exact same thing, because it's set during a period in history before the rise of the Valyrian Freehold. So I'll explain the timeline of events from that ancient history, because you have the Dawn Age, the Age of Heroes, the Long Night, then the rise of the Valyrian Freehold. The Dragon Lords of Valyria didn't really become a thing till after they had pushed the Night King back to the lands of Always Winter and built the wall. I really like the joke that the Night King now, after seeing episode 5 and Daenerys just go all ham on King's Landing, that the Night King helped build the wall himself with his magic because he wanted to protect the White Walkers from the dragons of Valyria. That's not actually true, that's just a joke that people are talking about. The wall was built with the help of the magic of the children of the forest, the first men, the giants, pretty much everyone coming together because it was happening after they pushed the White Walkers back. But there's a lot of magical enchantments that involve the powerful magics of the children of the forest. You also have to remember, based on recent context, that there was also a three-eyed raven that was minted during that period. That's probably when the children of the forest created the first three-eyed raven. It would be fun if Brandon the Builder became the first three-eyed raven. Raven, sort of closing the loop, even though I don't think that Bran Stark of present day is the same Bran, Brandon the Builder. There was a theory a long time ago about Bran potentially being all of the Brands because of the events of Hold the Door when Bran is seeing back in time using his green sight, but also working into Hoder in present day, creating this feedback loop across time space. A lot of people just thought that maybe he had something to do with the creation of the Night King. The way Bran explains it during Season 8 Episode 2 is that there have been many Three-Eyed Ravens. When one gets old enough and ready to die, he'll select another one or he'll use his green sight to find out who's supposed to be the next Three-Eyed Raven and then contact then through visions like we saw during season one of the TV show when Bran started to get visions of the Three-Eyed Raven after his accident. Thousands of years ago, there came a night that lasted a generation. In that darkness, the White Walkers came for the first time. They swept through cities and kingdoms, riding their dead horses, hunting with their packs of pale spiders, big as hounds. 
So remember, someday when Bran the Broken, first of his name, becomes old enough and gets ready to die, he will select another three-eyed raven to pass his knowledge on to. So even though in the books he's referred to as the last green seer, I guess you could say that he will not eventually be the last green seer. There'll be another one that's born someday in many, many years. But the Game of Thrones Blood Moon prequel that they're filming right now is filming at the Titanic Studios where they filmed the main show Game of Thrones. But if you've been watching the behind the scenes featurettes from Game of Thrones this season, they show you a lot of Titanic studio shots like where they built the big King's Landing replica so that they could destroy it during episode 5. They have all these giant crates stacked up so we have no idea what it looks like. But the Watchers people on Watchers on the Wall got some pictures of them filming in the area where they filmed some of the Veil vale scenes from season 6. So a lot of the locations will be familiar. They'll film in Northern Ireland and all over the place. But they're going to try to make it look a little bit different because this is 5,000 years before the events in present day. So here's the thing about that timeline. If you're familiar with the Song of Ice and Fire, there's already a pre-existing timeline of ancient events that we know about. George R. R. Martin came out recently and was like, yeah, you know, that's not completely accurate. Some of those events weren't quite so far apart as we believe. There were some Samwell scenes during season seven trying to address some of those factual inaccuracies about history. The Maesters tried to be as accurate as possible. But the tales of the long night can't be pure fabrication. Too many similarities from unconnected sources. And thousands of years before that, during the long night, we can forgive them for thinking it truly was the end, but it wasn't. None of it was. The wall has stood through it all. And every winter that ever came has ended. But when he's talking to Maester Ebros, they talk about how history can be twisted just a little bit if it's not recorded very accurately. And the Maesters didn't really become a thing till much, much later in the timeline. Recently, George R. R. Martin said that the series is taking place around 5,000 years ago, but loose timeline of events leading up to the events on this prequel series. You have the Dawn Age, which is basically the era when the First Men cross the Arm of Dorne to populate Westeros. The Children of the Forest start to war with them. They use the Hammer of Waters and their powerful magics on the Isle of Faces to smash the Arm of Dorne, causing this big cataclysm. It doesn't work. The First Men multiply like rats, overwhelming the Children of the Forest numbers. That leads them to eventually try to crack Westeros in half so that they could at least have the northern half of Westeros. That isn't completely successful and it winds up creating this marshy area that eventually became Moat Kaelin. So that's why there are so many weird boggy marshes around that area because the Children of the Forest actually tried to crack the continent in half. The war between the First Men and the Children continues to go worse and worse for them, finally forcing them to create the Night King and the White Walkers. Then, after the White Walkers go completely ham on everyone, the children sign the pact with the First Men. The signing of the pact is the event that ends the Dawn Age and begins the Age of Heroes. So, during the Age of Heroes early days, they form their alliance and they start to fight the White Walkers back, and they slowly descend into the Long Night. The White Walkers multiply and multiply, you start to get full-scale attacks, and then you have the events basically of this Blood Moon Game of Thrones prequel TV series. The reason why there's a lot of meaning in that name is because Blood Moon is basically a total lunar eclipse, basically representing the long night itself. Full night falling on Westeros, way worse than you saw during the one, count them, one episode during season eight. I know everyone was really upset about that. Symbolically, within the Christian faith, the Blood Moon also represents the apocalypse in the second coming of Jesus Christ, which, in the context of Game of Thrones story, is the Azor High mythical figure. So now them picking the Blood Moon working title makes a lot more sense. So even though the Valyrians have not tamed dragons yet, the Valyrian Freehold hasn't risen up, you still have a lot of really powerful deep magic in Westeros at this time. We'll probably see the formation of a lot of the great houses that we know in present day. So at that time, during the Age of Heroes, when they form the pact, they fight the Long Night, the Azor High figure rises up and they beat the Night King back to the lands of Always Winter. You have the formation of House Stark, the unification of the North, which actually predates the Long Night. So I'm assuming that when this prequel series begins, the North will already be unified or it'll be right after the Thousand Years War. And you see the beginning of the line of the Stark Kings of Winter. Supposedly, Brandon the Builder built Winterfell after he built the wall. So we'll just see how they deal with a lot of those things because it obviously took hundreds of years to finish building the wall. So it's not like it all happened overnight, one thing right after the other. But there was House Gardener in the Reach, Garth the Gardener. The Storm Kings of House Durandon in the Stormlands, founded by Durin Godsgrief, the Casterlies of Casterly Rock, then Land the Clever, who eventually formed House Lannister after conning the Casterlies out of Casterly Rock. We might see that play out in the prequel series. The Grey King of the Iron Islands and the Winged King of the Vale. 
So you have Winterfell, Storm's End, Pike, Hightower, Old Town, and Moat Kalen as castles that had been around at that point. But if you read a lot about Winterfell history, you know that there are really only a few structures that have survived from that original period. The very first structure that was called Winterfell was destroyed. The oldest structure in modern day Winterfell surviving now is actually from the time of the Andal invasion. That's the old tower. That's the tower that Bran got pushed out the window of by Jamie during season one, episode one. At that time, the biggest cities were Old Town and Casterly Rock, the place around that that would eventually become Lannisport, but it didn't become Lannisport till after the death of Land the Clever, so that happened a little bit later in history. There was a town at White Harbor built around a coastal fort called the Wolf's Den, but it later wound up becoming White Harbor. I'm actually really hoping that they involve some of the unification of the North in this series too, because that's actually a really fascinating story, but I think it'll predate some of the stuff that's happening on the show. What a coincidence, big Easter egg, the King of Winter at that time was called King John Stark, the John that Jon Snow was named for, even though his real name is Aegon Targaryen. So what will happen is, is when we get some more details about exactly what is going to be happening during season one of this Blood Moon Game of Thrones prequel series, I'll talk a little bit more about history from that period. There's a lot of fascinating stuff that was happening in the North, but in terms of the creation of the Night King, all we really know is, is that it's going to chronicle the creation of the White Walkers. We don't know if it's going to start with that, and that's going to be the first event, or if it's going to happen over the course of the first season, and that's going to be the finale. Like, boom, White Walkers created everybody screwed because they did make it sound like the prequel series obviously we're going back to 10 episodes a season and hopefully five to seven seasons at least depending on how successful it is that even though they'd be spending as much money to make the prequel as big as the main show has been the last couple of seasons they're trying to get back on a story level back to the things that made the first couple of seasons of game of thrones really great so not completely discarding character development in favor of big spectacle even though it sounds like hbo is moving forward with a couple of the other prequel series as well it sounds like they're going to only air this one prequel starting next year as of right now unless some big production delay ends up happening later this year they didn't say exactly when it's going to premiere. Hopefully it'll be sometime between spring and summer. They're going to be filming all through the summer and typical Game of Thrones seasons, at least for the first couple of season through season four, would start filming in the summer and then they would air their episodes in the spring. So until HBO says otherwise, just assume that they'll start airing episodes sometime next summer. I don't expect them to drop a trailer or any kind of teaser or anything like that till either the very end of this year or early next year. Typical Game of Thrones trailers drop in January, February, but we'll see. I'll be doing bonus videos for the prequel all summer long, but if you have special requests, just leave them in the comments below. If there's any history videos that you want me to do or any specific videos on houses or people from that period, don't forget about all the other big stuff that's coming too. The Amazon Lord of the Rings series, The Witcher, Netflix TV series, HBO's Watchmen TV series. There's a bunch of stuff coming later this year, so of course I'll do videos for all that stuff. There'll be more Game of Thrones videos coming later this week. I'll name a giveaway winner when I post those. While you wait for everything, Click here for my Game of Thrones finale video wrap up and click here for my episode six Easter egg video. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody stay awesome. I'll see you guys tonight.